What's up, guys? Mike from Two Business Review, and today we are continuing and finishing the NFC in my record prediction series for all 32 teams. Now, Daniel, the other member of the channel, completed all 32 of his predictions team by team, and he created a final video predicting every single record for every single team, and uh, you'll see the I card for that in the top right, so make sure to check that out. So today in this video, we're concluding the NFC West and predicting the Seattle Seahawks and I think Seahawks fans are going to be happy. Make sure you guys keep up supporting these videos. Make sure you're subscribing, dropping some comments. And um, so before we get in and predict game by game, let's talk about whether or not I think the Seahawks are a good team. And let me tell you right now, the Seahawks are a good team. So the thing I don't like, though, about this team, they ran the ball 46% of the time in 2019, which was way too high, in my opinion. You have Russell Wilson and DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. So when you have the pieces on offense, you know, to have an MVP caliber quarterback be productive, I think they should be just letting Russell Wilson air it out. Um, I do understand Chris Carson, definitely a big factor for this offense. I do think Chris Carson is a good running back, but I think that running the ball almost 50% of the time is a little too much. DK Metcalf had a really good rookie year, almost 60 receptions for 900 yards, seven touchdowns. He was definitely undervalued in the uh, 2019 draft. So I think that DK Metcalf turned out to be a great steal for the Seahawks. Tyler Lockett had another good season, breakout season, honestly. 82 receptions, almost 1,100 yards, 8 touchdowns. Um, Russell Wilson, really good year. Over 4,000 yards passing. He's still in his prime for sure. Hasn't really ever been injured ever, either before. Started every game in his career for the regular season. And um, the Seahawks didn't really have any notable losses in free agency. They lost a couple players, but they were kind of, for the most part, all Randys. Um, and the Seahawks did bring in a couple people. Some of them were Randys, but they added tight end Greg Olson. I think Greg Olson, um, I don't know how much he has left in the tank. I don't know if he's going to, you know, he might get injured this year because he's old. But I do think that Greg Olson could be a solid tight end for this team. Not not best in the league for sure, but Greg Olson is definitely reliable. Um, they brought an offensive guard, Chance Wormack, to help pr pr protect Russell Wilson. They brought in Phil Patriots wide receiver Philip Dorsett, which nobody really knows what kind of a player he is, but maybe the Seahawks can develop him into a good wide receiver three. And they brought in defensive end Bruce Irvin to help the defensive line. The big question mark for this team is whether or not Jadavion Clowney is going to be re-signed. Um, it's looking like he might. I'm not really sure yet. Um, but, you know, Jadavion Clowney did injure Carson Wentz in the playoffs, so that's enough about him. <laughs> All right, so let's start game by game predicting the Seahawks record. Week one, they played the Atlanta Falcons. Um, I think the Falcons are definitely going to be a worse team than last year. The Falcons lost so many pieces in free agency. Uh, I think they might be the worst team uh, as in terms of like how much they lost. I do think the Falcons still have a decent record this year, but they lost Devontae Freeman, Desmond Trufant, Vic Beasley, Austin Hooper. Um, they just lost too much to really be as great as they were last year. They won six games straight to finish out the season, but with all their losses, it's going to be tough to see them contending for the playoffs. Seahawks, on the other hand, I think they're going to be a playoff caliber team. They easily are going to get this win week one, 1-0. One oh. Next up, they play the New England Patriots. This game is in Seattle. First home game for the Seattle Seahawks. The Patriots definitely uh, did not improve uh, as a team. They lost their Tom Brady, you know, the GOAT at quarterback for the, for them. Uh, Jared Stedham is probably going to be starting this game. And, you know, him against the Seattle Seahawks defense is not going to be great. I think the Seahawks definitely get the win um, week two. And the Seahawks start off with a solid 2-0 and record. Week three, it looks like the Seahawks take on the Dallas Cowboys. Luckily for, for Seattle, this game is a home game. I think if this was in Jerry's world, I could see this game being a coin flip. But with the fact that it's in Seattle, it just gives the Seahawks a huge advantage over the Cowboys. Um, I don't think Dak Prescott, you know, we all know Dak Prescott does not have good games against teams with winning records. I think the Seattle Seahawks are going to be a great team in 2020. Seahawks get the win 3-0. and Next up, the Seattle Seahawks take on the new look Miami Dolphins. This game is in Miami, and this game feels like it could be an upset. Uh, it, it just has that thing. Like, you know, the Seahawks start off 3-0, and and this is a game that takes place in Miami for um, the Dolphins. But, I mean, let's be real here. Dolphins did improve. They got Byron Jones, obviously Tua. Uh, Devontae Parker had a breakout season. And Mike Gusecki, I think, is very undervalued. But let's be real here. You know, the Seahawks, if you look at the Seahawks' entire depth chart, it's just stacked. We got Trey Flowers, Bobby Wagner on defense. And then the Seahawks' offense, top five in the league, in my opinion. 
Russell Wilson, always an MVP uh, candidate. Seahawks get the win against the Dolphins, 4-0. Next up, Seahawks play the Minnesota Vikings, it looks like. Yep, they play the Minnesota Vikings. This game is in Seattle. Um, I think the Vikings are going to be a good team this year. I think Kirk Cousins definitely had a decent year last year, but Dalvin Cook was really the centerpiece of that offense. Um, they replaced Stefan Diggs with Justin, Je- with Justin Jefferson. So their wide receiver room is still pretty solid with Adam T1 and Jefferson. Um, they're looking for a number three receiver, though, and I think Dalvin Cook is definitely going to help the Minnesota Vikings out to win. I think the Seahawks defense, especially if Jadeveon Clowney is uh, on, remaining on that team, their defensive line is definitely going to help against Dalvin Cook, and the Seahawks take home the win here, and they start off 5-0. and oh. Um, Yeah, so they're looking to go undefeated so far. Unfortunately, the Seattle Seahawks win streak comes to a halt right here, week six. They play the Arizona Cardinals. Um, the Arizona Cardinals, you know, when the Cardinals play the Seahawks, it's always a game you want to watch. You know, the Seahawks always downplay against the Cardinals or vice versa. Um, divisional matchups are always fun things, but Seahawks versus Cardinals are one of my favorites to watch. I think the Cardinals, new look team, really dynamic offense this year with D Hop. Uh, I think Christian Kirk is highly overlooked. I think the Cardinals defense is even more overlooked than that, to be honest. The Cardinals, you know, they picked up some sleepers um, on that defense. And, uh, well, I'll, I'll explain that right now. Devon Kennard, Devondre Campbell, both linebackers. And they picked up Jordan Phillips from the Bills, defensive tackle. I think the Cardinals defense is going to be more of a surprise than their offense because everyone knows their offense is going to be good. So I do think that the Cardinals get the first victory in this matchup. Seahawks are 5-1. and one. Next up, the Seahawks take on the 49ers. This game's in Seattle. Um, I have the 49ers losing this game. I think the 49ers offense is going to take a step back in 2020. We predicted the San Francisco 49ers yesterday. Make sure to check that video out. But the 49ers, um, they lost Matt Burita. They lost Emmanuel Sanders, which was a big playmaker. Their, only, um, their wide receiver core is definitely not looking great in uh, San Francisco. It's um, Debo Samuels, their number one receiver, which oh, that's a little sketchy. Um, Matt Burita definitely was helping that offense. He averaged five and a half yards per carry on 250 attempts. So, you know, it's not looking good for the 49ers. Um, I think the Seahawks definitely get this win here, and they're 6-1. and one. Next up, the Seahawks take on the Buffalo Bills. I think the Bills are going to be a similar team to the Seattle Seahawks in 2020. I think this is going to be a really good game. I hope it's on prime time. Um, and it's in Buffalo, which is a big advantage for the Bills. I think Josh Allen and Devin Singletary are going to be a good duo. I think Stefan Diggs, um I think Stefan Diggs might not help the Bills. I let me let me rephrase that. Stefan Diggs is definitely gonna help the Bills on offense. I just don't think the Bills need that much help on offense. I think Cole Beasley, John Brown, definitely two solid receivers, uh, especially John Brown. And Stefan Diggs is just gonna help that offense get even better. The Bills defense also highly undervalued. They got Micah High and Tredavious White over there. Um, both really good players. And there's also another safety on that team who's really solid. I think the Bills are going to have a really good team. And I think the Bills slightly beat the Seahawks in this week. And the Seahawks start off 6-2. and two. The Seahawks then take on the Los Angeles Rams in the first of that divisional matchup. And I think the Rams uh, are going to be a bad team in 2020. I don't think they're going to be in contention for this division. It sucks It sucks for the Rams. Obviously, they went 9-7 and seven last year. But Jared Goff did not have a great season. He definitely did not uh, play as well as he should have. Um, yeah, the Rams... If they were in a different division, maybe they'd be in contention. But in the NFC West, you can basically just mark those off as losses. Rams definitely lose here. Seahawks improve their record to 7-2. and two. Next up, the, the Seahawks take on the Cardinals. This is a revenge game for them. It's in Seattle. Like I said, these games are fluky between the Seahawks and Cardinals. And let's just, let's just be safe and say the Seahawks split. Cardinals get the loss here. Seahawks get the win. And the Seahawks improve to 8-2. and two. Next up, Seahawks take on the Philadelphia Eagles in Philadelphia. Obviously, last year, the Seahawks went 2-0 and against the Philadelphia Eagles in 2019. Um, the Seahawks are, you know, they beat the Eagles twice, but the Eagles got a lot of people back from injury. The Seahawks had two close games against the Eagles when the Eagles were highly injured. So I think now that the Philadelphia Eagles are recovering from injury, if everyone's healthy at this point in the season, the Eagles should get this win here, and the Seahawks go to 8-3. and Brandon Brooks definitely is going to hurt the Eagles' chances, but I predicted these games before the Brandon Brooks injury. Seahawks, 8-3. and three. Next up, the Seahawks take on the New York Giants. New York Giants, um, honestly, I think they have a solid offense over there in New York. We got Saquon, Evan Ingram is a sleeper tight end. 
Uh, and I think they have a really good receiver core. Like the Giants, honestly, have one of the best receiver cores in the league. Um, maybe like top ten in the league. The Giants' defense, though, definitely their weak point. Russell Wilson is going to abuse that defense and easily get the win here. So it looks like the Seahawks are nine and three. Next up, Seahawks take on the New York Jets. Um, similar, similar um, game to the New York Giants. Jets' offense isn't great. They lost Robbie Henderson. Jets' defense isn't great. Obviously, Jamal Adams is the star. But the Jets, um, I don't think they're heading in the right direction. I think they need some work still. And the Jets fall short. Seahawks 10-3. 10-3. and, three. Ten and three, The Seahawks are looking to contend for the division right here. And they have a three-game closing stretch of playing at the Washington Redskins, then taking on the divisional rival Los Angeles Rams and the 49ers. So the first of those games is at the Washington Redskins. Uh, the Redskins did improve, and they're heading in the right direction. They got Ronald Darby and Chase Young on that defense. But I think their offense is definitely going to be a question mark in 2020. Terry McLaurin is uh, quickly developing into a good player for that team. But their quarterback position is a question. Their running back position is a question mark. Um, definitely the Seahawks take home this win, and they're 11-3 and at this point. Then they play the Rams. This game's in Seattle. They already beat them in Los Angeles. I can't see the Seahawks not going 2 you know, against this team, uh, against the Rams. I think the Rams aren't going to be great this year. Um, not not going to be contending for the division at all. Seahawks get the win, and they're 12-3. and 12-3, and three, the Seahawks are in contention um, for the division, and here they are playing against the 49ers. This could determine playoff seeding, you know, advantage, disadvantage, whatever. This game's in San Francisco, though, and I think this is going to be an upset. I, I think the 49ers are not going to be favored to win this game, but I think the 49ers will win this game against the Seattle Seahawks in San Francisco. I think the 49ers definitely have one of the strongest defenses in the league. And I think that, you know, George Kittle might have a breakout game right here and get the win. Seahawks finish 12-4. and four. Now, wait a second. For those of you who've been following the series, the NFC West reads as this. We're going to exclude the Rams because, you know, they were supposed to be 6-10. and 10. The Cardinals, I have at 12-4. and four. The 49ers, I have at 12-4. and four. And the Seahawks, I have at 12-4. and four. That's right. Three teams in one division I have for 12 and 4 records. Um, and you're going to have to click to my playoff video to see which one of these teams um, wins the division and see how the tiebreakers work. So, yeah, with that being said, Seahawks 12 and 4. And that concludes the NFC predictions. Next up, we got to start the AFC. And looking at this, it looks like the first AFC team is going to be coming from the AFC North, where we predict the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, I know we have a lot of Steelers fans on this channel, so yeah, you're all going to be excited for that. Um, trust me, I'm a little more harsh on the Steelers than Daniel is, but yep, thanks for watching. Make sure you guys share some support on this video, and there we go.